okay uh, thanks uh, arnab uh, so sorry for this uh, delay uh, and okay so let me start by thanking the organizers of course uh, for uh, uh, giving me this opportunity in spite of the fact that i have never really driven anything quasi periodically or periodically uh, <coughs> so okay so i'll i'll be talking about uh, something maybe uh, loosely related to which jet talked about Uh, but from a very different uh, perspective, and uh, this is uh, related to measurement induced transitions, but uh, not really directly. Uh, so I'll discuss a quantum model which might have this uh, measurement induced transition, uh, but we are not going to study it in the quantum limit. So it will be ultimately a classical uh, calculation, as you will see. But I'll try to motivate it from a quantum limit. Another thing is, uh, some of you might have heard this talk, so sorry to bore you again uh, with this. Okay, so so first uh, acknowledgement. So so all the work has been done by uh, Shibram, who might be here, uh, and uh, you can find the details in this uh, paper. Uh, so uh, I don't need to do the make this introduction here, but just to sort of uh, just to remind you. Uh, so I think the idea is to study this kind of what I'm broadly calling chaotic to non-chaotic phase transitions uh, for a particular reason, because that that's what I'm going to discuss. so i'm just putting all this uh, different things in this broad category and i think it sort of started fr from the interest of people in understanding this uh, many body localization transition uh, where you have uh, essentially this phase diagram uh, highly debated uh, though uh, that uh, you have a ergodic uh, to mbl phase transition and this transition is characterized by entanglement uh, one of the unambiguous ways Uh, so you go from a volume law to area law uh, if you tune disorder or uh, it might be possible also with the energy density uh, if it if, if there is a many, many body mobility edge uh, so uh, and also you can see this in uh, some entanglement growth other thing but the main point i guess here is that uh, people got interested into this uh, new paradigm of phase transition which they talked about Uh, which is uh, entanglement transitions and uh, that uh, led to all these uh, discussions i think we are having all these beautiful developments over this uh, last few years on uh, looking into quantum circuits uh, uh, initially to start with with unitary evolutions uh, but then going into uh, putting measurements uh, so again so this is the same uh, picture uh, taken from uh, the reference which i'll show i mean this is a familiar reference Uh, so you have uh, this uh, uh, some spin up uh, uh, state and then you are applying two qubits gates so with a, so with this uh, two qubits gates this will entangle the system as you go on, go on in time uh, but you sort of disturb this entanglement by doing some uh, projective or weak measurements uh, in each in, uh, each interval of time uh, with some uh, fraction of size on which you do this measurement okay and then the uh, and if you tune this uh, uh, rate of uh, measurements or you can tune uh, if you have a measurement strength uh, or even the unitary strength uh, uh, then you can actually uh, induce a transition and all this there are many many references i'm not citing all of those and uh, eventually you get this uh, this uh, nice uh, beautiful uh, transition that uh, as a function of this measurement rate you can go from this volume law to area law with some interesting critical a uh, phases in between and uh, there are many works also uh, so not only on this kind of gates uh, uh, unitary gates with uh, measurements but also uh, hamiltonian systems uh, and so uh, and even also weak measurements and other things so for example for non interacting fermions uh, interacting bosons small systems uh, uh, some bosonization description of course it's not a measurement induced transition but uh, effect of measurements on uh, sort of low energy states Uh, so there are a lot of works like this so now in this talk what i'm going to do i'm going to sort of uh, take a kind of a step back and uh, trying to see that uh, is there a meaning of talking about a classical limit uh, in a hamiltonian system of uh, this kind of measurement induced transition and uh, what i'm going to discuss is actually i'll try to uh, sort of motivate although i'll not be able to really show it because we have not done any calculation in the particular model in the quantum limit that i'll discuss uh, but what i'll try to show that uh, you can start with a quantum model uh, of measurements of interacting system and then uh, go to the classical limit take the classical limit in a controlled way uh, essentially it will be a classical limit by taking h bar going to zero in this model 
and uh, and then uh, the, so you will see that there is a trans uh, so what happens in this classical uh, model it will actually become a stochastic klein java dynamics type model where the measurement actually directly lead to noise and dissipation okay so i'll show that the measurement strength actually determines the noise strength in this klein java equation and then uh, in this kind of equations uh, there are such transitions known as classical nonlinear dynamics which are called synchronization transition so i'll actually show that uh, by tuning this noise or dissipation strength which is same in the measurement strength if you start thinking with the quantum limit you will actually have a transition where in classically uh, your uh, phase so there will be one phase where, where you have less noise or in other words uh, weak measurements uh, weak strength of the measurement Uh, then you can you will have classical trajectories uh, which actually uh, will uh, if you start two trajectories very close by initially uh, so at a later time they will uh, deviate away from each other exponentially with this lyapunov exponent which will be positive however if you go on increasing this noise or measurement uh, you will eventually uh, get to a situation where these trajectories rather than going away from each other sort of try to come to, to close together and in fact the lyapunov exponent become negative and this is known as the synchronized phase uh, or stochastic synchronization and uh, i'll try to argue that uh, this something like that might be happening in many of these measurement models okay okay so uh, so i already gave the outline so this is sort of the uh, way i'll progress so i'll start with actually a, mo a quantum model of continuous uh, weak measurements and then i'll try to take the limit uh, the h bar going to zero limit analytically and we'll derive a model which will actually will see that our very well known stochastic klein java equations where the noise or dissipation strength will be exactly equal to the measurement strength in the quantum limit and then i'll show that uh, in this uh, klein java equation so this is of course nothing special about this measurement i mean this klein java equation will be a standard klein java equation and i'll try to argue that any interacting system this klein java equations actually has a transition okay which we generally don't see any other dynamical properties but you can see if you look into chaos okay so that's what i'm going to do and i'll actually show a transition i'll show that this transition has some nice finite size scaling properties also all right and i'll also look to sort of contrast this uh, scenarios i'll also look into two different types of model one is a non integrable completely non integrable model uh, like some quartic oscillators coupled oscillators and another would be this integrable interacting integrable toda model and i'll try to contrast how this happens in these two different models okay okay so let's start so first the quantum model of continuous weak measurement so we are essentially trying to generalize a model and probably this has been done earlier also many people so i i don't know the literature very well uh, so the way we started with is this well known paper by caves and milburn uh, where they uh, wrote down a weak measurement model uh, for a single particle okay so we are what we are going to do we are we going to generalize it just to uh, many coupled oscillators so essentially this one dimensional oscillator which is let's say described by this model where you have some kinetic energy and some interacting potential energy between the oscillator so it will have some quadratic term quartic term etc etc okay so this is the uh, what i'm going to call the system hamiltonian and uh, and the measurement so let me now describe what uh, measurement we do on this what is the protocol uh, so this is the idea so what you do so you, you are trying to do measurement in, in uh, interval of time tau so basically in this discrete time tau uh, you do the measurement and you do the measurement on all oscillators okay simultaneously so this doesn't matter the measurement i am doing is commutes with each other so it doesn't matter i can do it simultaneously or one after other uh, and the way i uh, do it uh, do this measurement is by coupling this system uh, in this kind of a kicked manner uh, with uh, some ancilla uh, or the detector or what is called a pointer uh, so this uh, so basically for each instant of time n for each oscillator i will have a pointer which is a quantum particle with a position and momentum and the momentum of this pointer is described by this p hat uh, indexed by i n okay so at each instant of time n i have uh, this uh, pointers of the detector so effectively what is happening is i am starting with some initial state i am doing this measurement in this discrete interval and between these two discrete uh, times uh, uh, the system evolves with this original unitary evolution okay 
and then uh, just before the measurement uh, t n minus one what i am uh, do i am ready i am already ready i make uh, uh, i keep these detectors uh, which are uh, uh, generated in a gaussian so each of the detectors uh, are generated in a gaussian state and uh, and this uh, the strength of this uh, which is related to the strength of the measurement is indicated by this parameter sigma okay so this is just before the measurement then at tn what we do is uh, basically this term will now work at, at at t equal to tn and then uh, this coupling will switch on uh, instantaneously and then switch off at that instant of time and then uh, at tn plus i uh, make the uh, projective measurements on the position of these meters okay so I, so this is why this is a weak measurement so then i'll get a set of readings uh, so this is the measurement system so uh, so you can of course write it uh, the density matrix evolution using some unitary part and some krauss operator uh, some measurement operators uh, and of course this can also be written as a standard quantum state diffusions for pure state etc uh but what i'm going to do uh, is i'm going to actually write down a path integral for this and take then take the uh, classical limit so uh, so here there is one uh, extra bit here so i'm going to take a particular uh, uh, so there is a, so another uh, extra thing here which is that i also put uh, following caves and milburn i also put a uh, feedback uh, in the system so essentially the, what the feedback does if you don't put the feedback this particle Uh, the momentum will sort of go diffuses away uh, so what you try to do is by putting a displacement operator you try to bring it back so that the momentum just doesn't go to infinity okay so that's the uh, that's what this feedback or the uh, yeah feedback does and uh, then what i'm going to do is i have two parameters uh, measurement related parameter what one is this sigma which is this width of the gaussian wave function and another is tau which is the how often i am doing the measure so uh, the limit i am going to look at is uh, when uh, basically i take this sigma going to infinity basically very weak measurement very uh, broad gaussian but i do it too often tau going to zero and then i keep this delta finite okay so that's the limit i can write a path integral uh, for this system and you can write down a keldish path integral uh, for this uh, this dynamics uh, this exact uh, density matrix evolution for a given realization of jai okay Uh, and uh, I, of course the quantum problem should be studied we have not studied it so what i'm now going to do is going to take the classical limit of this keldish path integral okay so this is a st standard way so what you do is uh, in keldish i have these two branches plus and minus so they are in uh, uh, showing this here plus and minus and then uh, what i do is i uh, essentially write do a keldish rotation i write it as a combination of uh, so this should be uh, classical anyway so uh, i write it as a combination of uh, classical and quantum variable uh, this whole uh, path integral and then uh, the way you take the small h bar or classical limit uh, is uh, by expanding in this quantum component which is effectively expanding in h bar okay and it turns out to have any interesting physics you cannot take the strict classical limit in this model you have to take a semi classical limit where h bar is not zero but small okay so if you take completely classical limit this gives some trivial results uh, uh, infinite dissipation essentially okay uh, so if you do this what you will find that you will find your favorite uh, langevin equation that we have studied for very long okay and uh, here you will have a dissipation strength gamma and you have this noise uh, gaussian noise and the strength of this i am just writing this as gamma into t okay so there is some strength i am just defining some effective temperature here and uh, this noise strength is uh, related uh, given by h bar square by delta and it turns out to do take the classical limit meaningfully you have to think of also scaling this delta as h bar square then only there is a meaningful limit okay so this is the noise strength and you can define obtain the effective temperature so effective temperature goes like square root of h the main point is that your noise strength here is entirely determined by the quantum fluctuation parameter h bar and the, your measurement strength okay so the it looks like the standard langevin equation with some effective temperature but it is exactly like uh, but here the noise is entirely controlled by quantum fluctuations and measurements okay so if you don't have yes uh, no so that has actually given this uh, gamma so that is the origin of this dissipation term so if you don't give that this this term will be absent okay 
So this gamma is actually the strength of this uh, feedback. Uh, so this is where the gamma appears. Okay. So this is how you give the feedback. So if you don't give the feedback, it will not settle into a nice steady state. So with this gamma, what happens is if you, you satisfy a fluctuation dissipation theorem, so it will eventually lead to a classical Boltzmann distribution that will be your non-equilibrium steady state of this process, okay? where the temperature is determined by this. So I don't know how much time do I have? I'm going too slow for uh, You have around uh, oh, Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You are not using the information of the outcome. Yeah. So the, oh, that's a very important question. So it turns out that in this limit, this information doesn't matter. It sort of go away. So there is actually, uh, so there is some technical detail here. So if you sort of try to write down the path integrals of various objects, like OTO, so I'm going to discuss OTOC. Okay. So it turns out that matters, it sort of couples two trajectories. In a, there is some additional term which sort of couples these two trajectories, which comes from integrating out these uh, measurements in this kind of nonlinear uh, object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not very different. Uh, so this, it, that's why it's not clear how exactly it is connected to the kind of thing Jade and other people are talking about, right? So it turns out in this classical limit, this uh, I, I'm not integrating or averaging over the outcome. It doesn't matter, okay? So it sort of doesn't come out in in this calculation. So I don't completely understand how it sort of comes. Yeah, hmm. It it could so once you have derived it, there is no dif difference, right? So what I'm going to now show is that even in a caldera legate, but you will have a transition. Okay. Okay. So so the question is, as I said, that is there a transition in these things? Of course, this is a one D or coupled oscillators Langevin equation has been studied, and we have never seen any transitions in standard quantities. Uh, so, so certainly there will be not a transition in any standard dynamical quantities like diffusions and other things, right? You have to look into something else. Uh, and uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so what? Uh, so I'll start uh, with the case where uh, you have the noise or measurement strength zero, uh, so that you only have in the classical limit. You just have the Newton's equations. Okay. So I'll I'll uh, start with this and then try to go into the case where you have non-zero gamma. So uh, so I'm as I said, I'm going to look into two models. Uh, so one model is the standard non-integrable model, uh, uh, similar to uh, Fermi Pasta uh, not exactly, but uh, so you have uh, uh, this uh, quadri quadratic and quartic term. And another model I'm sort of going to contrast with is this integrable Toda chain. Okay. Uh, so this is the, uh, so I'm just now, since it's a classical model, I just simulate this uh, thing uh, in classical. Okay. And the quantity that we are going to look at is essentially just this Lyapunov exponent. And the way we just look at it, uh, we to look, sort of get some special information. Uh, this is a standard thing which has been done recent years, uh, starting with work at ICTS. Uh, so what you do is uh, you, you take two initial conditions and I uh, give a small difference between the two initial conditions, but the difference I give locally. So that I have some local information. Okay, so I only, so for example, here at zero site, I give a small difference between the positions of these two trajectories and then I just evolve. And for uh, reasons, uh, we only, I mean, we, we can look at other uh, differences, but we look into this uh, momentum difference. Okay, so basically at each uh, site I, uh, which is some distance away from the initial site, uh, you look into how this quantity, which is called the classical OTOC or decorrelator or whatever you like, uh, you, you just look into this difference. Okay. And uh, here, uh, as I said, that the long time steady state is a thermal initial state. So you average, uh, so you generate initial conditions which are drawn from uh, basically generated by some Monte Carlo or some Langevin dynamics to be initial thermal distributions. Uh, so that's what uh, we look into. Okay. So first, let's look into this case where you have this non integrable model, but no noise or in some sense, no measurement. If you, you uh, would like to think that way. So then what you find is that, uh, so this is gamma equal to zero. All I'm having is the interaction strength u. Uh, so what you will find that if you have u equal to zero, this model, of course, so I'm plotting log no, uh, no, normal scale. So uh, so if, if there is an exponential growth, there should be some linear region here. So what you will find that if u equal to zero, it uh, doesn't have any exponential growth. Only if you make u finite, then immediately we'll get some exponential growth. Okay. So that means there is a positive Lyapunov exponent. So the inter non-interacting model doesn't have any chaos. 
and you can also see the light cone spread here. So you'll have a light cone, uh, and that will define you a uh, butterfly velocity. So you can also do the same thing in the Toda chain without the noise. So Toda chain uh, turns out that, uh, uh, I mean, you don't really have any linear re region in Toda chain. So that means the Lyapunov of exponent is not positive. Okay. Uh, uh, and it probably zero and, uh, and, but however, in the Toda chain, you have still a light cone. I mean, the inside the light cone, it might look weird, but it still has a light cone. Okay. So that means the Toda chain has a finite uh, butterfly velocity, but no Lyapunov of exponent. Okay, so now let's put the noise. So uh, noise, when you put the noise strength, uh, so then you have to also think about how to define this difference. Okay, because uh, now you have two trajectories. If you put com completely uncorrelated noise in these two trajectories, then there's nothing to compare. So it turns out the right thing to do is to take correlated noise. So both the trajectories uh, for each oscillator at each instant of time exactly has same noise. Okay. And it turns out if you then calculate the same quantity, as I uh, discussed earlier, so this is a meaningful quantity to look at. And in fact, uh, this is the result. So if you take the quartic oscillator, you indeed find, so this is for a fixed value of gamma. Then you average noise yeah, you average over noise realization or initial condition. So in our case, we generally do initial condition average, but you can do that also. Yeah. So, so you, what you will find for gamma equal to zero, uh, in fact, uh, so now I have fixed a gamma, I am varying u. So you, you can see that when interaction is small, then uh, the Lyapunov exponent is actually negative. This quantity is actually decaying. And as you in, increase the interaction, then it become chaotic. Okay. So what you have, what is happening is you have a chaotic transition, lambda L greater than zero to lambda L less than zero. Here I am uh, varying u. Uh, but you can also vary fixing u, you can vary gamma and you'll see the same kind of transition. So it's basically what matters is u by gamma, right? So there is a chaotic transition. So in some sense, this transition is happening because of the measurement strength, uh, which is the noise strength in this model. Okay. So this is Lyapunov exponent. You can in fact see this, how for different values of gamma as, as you change u, the, so it goes uh, to neg positive to negative below at some critical value. Uh, so uh, some critical UC and another thing to note here is that there is very little finite size scaling effect on Lyapunov exponent okay, in this transition. And you can see the similar transition as a function of gamma. So what happens to the light cone? So you can also look at the light cone. So this is in the chaotic phase where U is large. So you have a light cone and as, as you go through UC, so that light cone is destroyed. Okay. So the butterfly velocity goes to zero. So you have also a transition in the butterfly velocity it goes to zero. Uh, um, in a continuous fashion looks like, and you have more or less within our numerics, more or less same value where it uh, goes to zero, where the Lyapunov exponent goes from positive to negative. All right. So you can actually look into uh, the uh, finite. So as I said, the Lyapunov exponent doesn't have much finite size scaling, but you can look into the, uh, the uh, dependence of the system size dependence on the butterfly velocity. At least whatever data we have, we could collapse into uh, by the scaling uh, form you could collapse into uh, this kind of thing and uh, you can extract uh, within this limited uh, uh, numerics, uh, you can actually extract some uh, critical exponents and uh, these critical exponents. Uh, so uh, generally this kind of transitions, even classical system has been studied by many people uh, and uh, uh, in cellular automata in other systems. And typically they find uh, directed percolation or some Carter uh, parisi jhang type universality class. So this doesn't match with, okay. Uh, so, uh, so uh, that is the thing. And of course, as I said that, uh, is there any transition in any other dy dynamical properties? Uh, so the answer of course is known. I mean, we know that there is no transition. So what I'm showing here is uh, just looking into a pa single particle diffusion, uh, looking into the mean square displacement and the mean square displacement of a single. So it's like a polymer monomer diffusion. Okay. Uh, so this is like a polymer essentially. Uh, so, uh, so we find that when you have no noise, then this is a diffusive form. Uh, you have some uh, diffusive uh, growth of this um, mean square displacement and then there's some diffusion constant. Uh, and as soon as you put some uh, gamma, uh, if you put some noise, so it becomes subdiffusive. Okay. This is actually known from polymer uh, monomer diffusion. Okay. Uh, so these are well-known results. So that, but it doesn't have any transition at any value of gamma or u. Uh, right. So this transition, you only seeing uh, this. So what is this transition? Okay. So actually when we started working on it, we didn't know about any of this literature. 
Uh, so after uh, getting all these things, we realized that uh, this kind of thing people have studied in nonlinear dynamics. Uh, but what they did, they didn't do it on a couple, uh, Hamiltonian system. So they took some coupled map lattices. So essentially, you have some nonlinear map. Uh, at each lattice site and you couple them and then you look into this kind of butterfly velocity and Lyapunov exponent and in fact uh, in those cases they found uh, there is this transition and this is called stochastic synchronization. So by now noise you are synchronizing the trajectories. Okay? Uh, and uh, so essentially it turns out that the transition we are finding is also uh, same kind of transition but now, now, now in a Hamiltonian system and this is fairly generic because this model we took anything nothing special really. Right? So, you would expect this to happen in any other model also. Uh, so, uh, so, that's the thing and certainly this is some measurement into space transition. Whether this is the transition that we are interested in the quantum limit that I don't know. Okay? Because we have not studied the quantum limit. So, how it connected. Uh, so, just last uh, sort of slide before I end. So, what happens in the Toda chain? So, Toda chain uh, kind of uh, something uh, may be expected but may be interesting also. So, as I showed you that uh, Lyapunov exponent for Toda chain for the gamma zero limit, which is the integrable limit is zero. Okay. So, this is zero. So, now as you, as soon as you put some noise, uh, what happens is that this noise initially makes it chaotic. Okay. And this is in fact known for few particle system by work by Kutsan and others. Uh, and that actually grows like gamma to the power uh, three, uh, one third or something. So, we get something very close. So, it initially grows. Uh, and then it has a peak, but eventually at very large gamma, it has to go through the synchronization transition. So, it does go through that and it will again go from positive to negative. Uh, something uh, interesting also happens for butterfly velocity. So, butterfly velocity as I showed is not zero at uh, integrable point, it is finite. But if you try to approach the butterfly velocity from this side, from gamma positive, uh, gamma non-zero side, it turns out it almost like have some kind of a singularity there. Okay. Uh, of course, ultimately finite system probably it will uh, come down continuously, but uh, it looks like that these two approaches are, are different. Okay, and uh, then the other, the, so the, essentially there are two transitions here, one in the integrable limit and other in this. Okay, so let me uh, sort of uh, end, so I'm done uh, basically, so end with this. So this is the same as my summary. So essentially what I tried to show is that you can start with a very generic uh, weak quant uh, quantum measurement, uh, continuous measurement model and derive this stochastic Langeva equation which just looks like any standard Langeva equation which will even get from caldera legate bath and, uh, and this uh, 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 system has a synchronization transition, very generic uh, transition. Uh, now in this particular quantum model, uh, this parameter uh, that controls the transition which is the noise is same as measurement strength. So you have this transition, of course you have looked into a certain way of taking small age bar limit. Uh, so the question is really to add uh, axis here okay, and try to see this entanglement transition uh, that is there in uh, quantum limits, how it goes into this thing. Is there any connection to this? I don't know. Okay. Uh, so with this, I thank you for your attention. Uh, questions? Thank you for the yeah, very interesting talk. I was just curious, the synchronized phase, can you hmm. characterize it with correlation function? Yeah, uh, so can. there are some, uh, you can sort of calculate these active sites, not really correlation function. I mean, I have, we have not done. Uh, the people who have done, deviation. they have sort of active sites and other kind of standard things. Uh, how much, like you start with many sites different than whether they grow or how they like, grow. Like they do those kind DP of, kind of uh, thing. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I have. Uh, so, uh, if I keep increasing gamma, uh, there'll be some regime where things will start becoming linear because of very high dissipation, right? Yes. So, so this synchronized phase is something between. It's still non-linear, but it's yes. it's still non. Yeah. So the so this gamma going to infinity, it will just go to the some minima potential energy minima, right? So like steepest descent. The dynamics is uh, essentially becoming a kind of a steepest descent type. type. But it, no, no, yes. I mean, essentially, it will go to zero actually. So, it will, all the particles will go to the zero displacement. So, freeze to the zero displacement.
Yeah, so in so between the, you have this. Right. Yes. No, the gamma going to infinity is fine, but I'm saying even before that, uh -huh. there is a regime where effectively u over gamma is very small. Right. So the so any model would just become like harmonic oscillators, right? Like a harmonic network. So is there a regime before yeah. gamma infinity, but after gamma c, mm -hmm. where it just becomes like a harmonic network, no matter what well, you start. We have not. Yeah, we have not looked into that, uh, but. Uh, See, uh, I don't know really because, okay, we didn't study, but this diffusion that I showed, so it turns out actually very weird thing that in the harmonic limit, and this is known actually analytically. If you look into mean square displacement, it even harmonic limit, it looks diffusive without gamma. Okay. Uh, but as soon as we put some gamma, we always find that it is sub diffuse. So I don't really know how this, so then it will be a uh, crossover or transition from sub diffusive to diffusive, what you are saying, because in the harmonic limit, you expect it to become diffuse it. So, I don't know where that is happening. Yeah. So, um, just a clarif clarification because I did not understand. So, if mm. you would do this analysis for the cosine interaction potential, mm -hmm. you would get the standard Kuramoto. Yes. Kuramoto. Yes. Ah, yes. So, this would correspond to Kuramoto for that potential, right? Or not? Or no. So, we have an extra process here, which is the measurement process. Right, so I have a Hamiltonian, so that will become Kuramoto if you use some. Uh, no, but saying uh, also in Kuramoto you have uh, dissipation. Uh, so I can rather than putting this uh, quadratic and quadratic, I can put Kuramoto model. Uh, I, I don't think that. Uh, yeah, that will. You get something different, or because also there. No, so there of course there is a phase synchronization. So I am not talking about phase synchronization, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, more questions? Oh yeah. Yeah, in the, in the classical integrable model, I expect the KAM theorem to apply as I go in towards the chaotic regime. So you, you've sort of canceled that out with your noise. Yes. It's destroyed yeah. the invariant tori right, and you're yeah. already... So actually, this is nice. Understanding is there in this Kutchan, Jorge Kutchan paper. Okay. So basically, what happens is this tori rather than getting destroyed, initially it's sort of diffuse, like the tori sort of starts moving, like defacing, essentially. So there is an understanding of how you get this gamma one. Okay. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, the, the in the just this is a kind of common, but in the in the classical case, people looked at what they called the forced uh, measurement situation, mm -hmm. which is where you impose, you, you declare a mm -hmm. distribution of measurement outcomes, and then you um, run the dynamics projecting mm -hmm. into those, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or with mm -hmm. weak measurement analog of that. So I think this is effectively what you're doing here mm -hmm. because you're not using the information. Yes. So I think that, that it will yeah. probably then it connects yeah. to that yeah. transition yeah. rather than the transition right. where you use In the information. Okay. Yeah, so you have to figure out a right. classical limit of right. using the information, right. Right. using right. the Born update, right. basically. Right. Um, yeah, that's which, a very interesting. So yeah, that's, that's I think. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, so somehow in this case, the noise and dissipation satisfy fluctuation mm -hmm. dissipation and it goes to equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So supposing I just take one oscillator with this kind of a noise, right. even a harmonic oscillator. Right. So you're saying uh, it will, at least at a classical level, it reaches mm -hmm. thermal equilibrium. Yes, yes. But in that case, supposing I look at the actual quantum, full quantum problem, mm -hmm. I mean, would it, I mean, do you think? Uh, yeah, so actually we have, I, I mean, I didn't show. So I have, we have worked, I mean, worked out this uh, non-interacting case. Uh, so you can solve the steady state. So what you can show that you will reach this. Uh, so there I'm not deriving Langeva equation. I'm doing full quantum calculation with Keldis Green's functions. So you can show that the, they satisfy fluctuation dissipation with, uh, the, uh, there is some correction. So there is a temp uh, frequency dependent temperature if you do in the quantum limit. And if you take the classical limit, you find this result. So you are in the quantum limit, it will not satisfy uh, this fluctuation dissipation. Yeah. So with the non-interacting case, we can solve exactly. In fact, non-interacting case, even the entanglement can be calculated. This is not part of this work, but something that we are doing for the measurement process. Any other question? Well, if not, then let's thank both the speakers again. <laughs>